but Covey's off the table. Oh, come on, Paul, be reasonable. I am being reasonable, but Covey is off the table. <sighs> Unless you're willing to think about your Williams. Oh, you can't be serious. Willie McCovey for Ted Williams? That's an insult. <laughs> I love that show. Plenty of people love collecting baseball memorabilia, but one fan is truly in a league of his own. Attorney Marshall Fogel started amassing his collection three decades ago. Now it's recognized as one of the best anywhere, and some of it is on display at a Colorado museum. Barry Peterson has the story. The thing about baseball is not how much it has changed in its almost two centuries, but how little. It's a throwback on what people really think America is all about. Where do you stand at the national anthem and take me out to the ball game on the seventh inning? And Marshall Fogel would know. In 1996, he spent $121,000 for a Mickey Mantle card and then started amassing one of the largest personal collections of baseball memorabilia in America, all for the love of the game. I don't care if you were the banker of the town, the sheriff, you were, uh, you know, certain ethnic or race, you all went to the game, you all sat pretty much together and you all rooted for the home team. And it was, it brought people together. Some pieces are now on exhibit at History Colorado Center in Denver, like the handprint Babe Ruth made for a palm reader. So when you, the fan, walk into the exhibit, you can shake hands with Babe Ruth. And Joe DiMaggio, a slugger maybe better known for his 274-day tumultuous marriage to Marilyn Monroe. Here, a receipt for roses sent to her long after their divorce. There's a story that he would send roses to her grave. Every day. Every day when he was alive. Yes. Why do you think he did that? Because he n never stopped loving her. When we visited the exhibit with Marshall, he drew a crowd. When you go to a game today, is it still as much fun as it was in the, the old days? I believe so. I think it's because of the culture that we live in. It's what you do before the game as well. You play catch with your father, or your mother, and, and it's, a, it's a coming together of a family that's very busy in life as opposed to years ago. Jason Hansen was the curator who put the exhibit together with his own memories of going to games with his father. Was it like a chance to bond, a chance to learn, a chance to pass on something that he loved to you? It's a chance to share time together, which uh, is an increasingly valuable commodity in this world. Since it's Father's Day, we ask this father of two daughters about teaching them. So, Dad, how old are the girls? Five and seven. Are you going to start playing catch with them, or are they going to be in Little League? We already do play catch. Uh, You've they... already started it with Of them. course. Marshall has baseball's signs of changing times, like when players endorsed cigarettes, or after Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in the all-white major leagues. There were comics so young black children could believe their dreams would come true as well. And then there's Lou Gehrig, who developed ALS. Marshall has one of the last original pictures of Gehrig relegated to the dugout as disease stole his skills. But if you look closely at his face, you can see and imagine what he must be thinking, that something's wrong because he's sick and maybe I won't be able to play anymore. And there's even a story behind his last words to fans about the game he loved. Joe McCarthy, the manager, said, Lou, you got to say something. So whatever he said that day came from his heart and not from a script. And that's why this is the thing Marshall cherishes the most. In his last days, an ailing Gehrig gave this bat to a kid named Jerry. Here's the inscription. To Jerry, may you take better advantage of this than I did. And it's signed Lou Gehrig. What does that tell you about Lou Gehrig? It tells me that this is like his whole career was humble, no, no, no matter how great, even in 1936 when he won the MVP award, mm -hmm. he always was a gentleman, always cared about people. And uh, you, you just can't help 
but want to use him as a role model even today. It's still the same game on a summer's day. Nine guys against one lonely batter. And as the man who has collected so many memories knows well, it's still what it has always been. It's so simple when life is so complex. And when you add all that together, it comes out that baseball's magic. For CBS This Morning, Saturday, Barry Peterson, Denver. That is one incredible collection. I had some pretty cool baseball cards, but it seemed like I always lost them to my brother who convinced me to trade them away. You don't have any of them now? No. <laughs> uh, by the way, I don't know who produced that piece, but thank you for that Cubs shot. You know, I'm a Cubs fan. <laughs> Gotta give a shout out.